give this uh, lecture on snake bite management uh, um, uh, in Asia. And my topic, I will be talking about clinical management of snake bite envenoming uh, with, uh, in relation to Sri Lankan perspective. So as you know, uh, uh, the magnitude of the burden of the snake bite, as everybody knows, it's a public health hazard and it causes, it results in high medical and economic toll and uh, snake bite patients suffer, they suffer enormously and they, it causes disability. We all were looking, seeing that in the previous lectures and it can cause premature deaths. And WHO has recognized, re-recognized snake bite envenoming as category A uh, NTDs in 2017, neglected uh, tropical diseases, and it has estimated 80 to 140,000 of people die each year due to snake bite. And as, as we saw in the previous lectures, it also causes disability and disfigurement. So, so WHO has taken some action to reduce uh, the incidence by 50% before 2030. Uh, and WHO has recommended in, a, a, in regions to notify snake bite as, uh, noti as a notifiable disease. So as you see, snake bite is a major problem in the tropics and subtropical countries in Asian countries, including Sri Lanka and India. And it is mainly neglected uh, public health issue and it affects the poor rural communities. And as, uh, as mentioned earlier, there is serious misreporting about the reality, the number of real patients who have been envenomed and who have died due to snake bite. So, so Asia is also like other countries. It is a home for diverse array of venomous snakes as well as non-venomous. Among the venomous snakes, you see Naja species, you see Bangaroo crates, you see sea snakes, pit vipers, and Russell's viper, which is common in Sri Lanka, as well as the rare fang snakes or as well. So this is the geographical distribution of snake bite envenoming in Asia. If we take, there is about 1.2 to 2 million envenomings with 60 to 100,000 deaths has been estimated. So if we take Sri Lanka, it is also, also snake fauna is rich and diverse in Sri Lanka, which is being an island. We have about 107 species recognized and among them, luckily, we have only few venomous snakes. And majority of them are harmless non-venomous snakes. And still, see, even though we have few venomous medically important snakes, but they cause high burden, highest burden of envenoming and death rates. And as you know, in our country, a lot of people, most of the people goes to the uh, specialist, uh, snake bite specialist in the rural areas not to the Western treatment. So we don't have a proper recording system in Sri Lanka still. So about 60,000 people are uh, admitted to the hospital every year from the uh, from this chart where, where you have seen you have seen the snake bite envenoming going up as well as death say death rates of course I'm so proud to say that death rates are coming out coming less and less because we have about 100 deaths per uh, or less than 100 little less than 100 per year which was earlier of course at one stage in 1994 it, uh, Sri Lanka has reached the highest death rates due to snake bite. Uh, in the world, and it was recorded in the Guinness Book. But we have taken a lot of effort, and we have hotline services of snake bite management, as well as we have national guidelines, and we educate the community because of that. We have been able to bring down the morbidity and mortality of snake bite envenoming in Sri Lanka. 
So as you know, there are about 107 species recognized. Among them, only seven species are medically important venomous. And we are being an island, we are surrounded by sea and we have about 15 species of sea snakes. They are highly venomous. So the medically important ones are, as you know, cobra, crates. We have two types of crates. One is the Indian or common crate and the Sri Lankan crate. And we have Russus viper. We have saw scale viper. They too belong to the true viper family. And we have pit vipers like uh, green pit viper. We just heard in the Malaysian setup. Uh, Malaysian perspective and we have hump nose viper and we have C 15 species of sea snakes. All 15 are really highly venomous. This is the picture of a uh, cobra. Uh, you can see that. And common crate, this is Bangaru cerulus. This is common in Sri Lanka as well as India. And uh, we, this is peculiar, this is indigenous to Sri Lanka only, the beautiful snake, which is uh, really highly venomous, Bangaru selenicus or Sri Lankan crate which causes neurotoxic manifestation. And we have saw scale viper, which is also highly venomous. Uh, and uh, that is found in the uh, uh, sea soil. And we have uh, Russell's viper, that is Daboya Russelli or Viper Russelli, which is uh, uh, which is a friend as well as an enemy of the farmers. And we have pit vipers. This is the hump nose viper, which is uh, which has a pit also in between the nostrils and the eyes. And this is our beautiful green pit viper, which is arboreal. And we have beautiful, highly venomous sea snakes. Uh, as you know, snake venom acts on the human body. It acts at the blood, blood system, blood clotting system. It affects the nervous system. It affects the muscles. It causes. It affects the kidneys. It affects the heart and uh, uh, more or less like uh, every organ of the body. So when, when you have snake bite in Sri Lanka also, but I have shown you the common medically important snakes, they cause clinical syndromes like they, when they are coagulopathy, they cause neurotoxicity due to neuromuscular paralysis, they cause myotoxicity and it causes muscle damage, rhabdomyolysis, and later it can, it can contribute to acute kidney injury. They also cause this in Sri Lanka, cobra and pit vipers mainly causes severe a local cytotoxicity necrosis and they also causes acute kidney injury and uh, most of the viper viper in a family snakes which call as well as pit vipers especially hump nose viper which causes wick that is when venom induced consumption coagulopathy that is most uh, that is a serious complication which results in major hemorrhage and death in our population. So the syndromes, when we take the patient with snake bite envenoming, they can cause local envenoming. Most of the snakes, medically important snakes, causes local envenoming, except uh, the crates, both crates, does not cause local envenoming. Sometimes it's very difficult where they have chewed the patient. So, and uh, they, among them, they have hematological, renal, neuro, neuromyotoxicity as well. So, if we take a cobra bite, uh, cobra envenoming, it can cause severe neurotoxicity and wound. Uh, we need to do the wound uh, debridement and local wound uh, severe envenoming. And they, they cause uh, neurotoxicity like diplopia, external ophthalmoplegia. And they also, these patients needs finally, they need a, a skin graft and it causes, this is one of our handler, snake handler, who has been bitten by a cobra and it has caused uh, really skin graft and it has caused cosmetic as well as disability for that patient still. This is a patient who has been bitten by a Russell's viper bite. It causes mainly, it affects the clotting pathway and it causes venom-induced consumption coagulopathy. So they get spontaneous bleeding from mouth. And the Sri Lankan Russell's viper Viper not only causes hematological manifestation, it is peculiar and it affects the neuromyot neurological and my, my muscle toxicity. So they also causes like cobra, it also 
also causes the external ophthalmoplegia, pa uh, complete or partial ptosis, and the bleeding, and the 20 minutes whole blood clotting test causes uh, uh, an unclottable blood or incoagulable blood, and they also causes uh, uh, hematuria and Coca-Cola color mm -hmm. urine due to rhabdomyolysis. They cause hemoglobinuria, hematuria, and myoglobinuria. And this is one of my patients who was being bitten by a farmer who has been bitten by a Russell Swiper while working in the paddy field, and he became unconscious after the Russell Swiper bite. And we did a CT, non-contrast CT scan, and we found that there is bleeding, intracranial bleeding. Then this is a patient uh, who was bitten by a hump nose wiper. And uh, this is a lady uh, who was bitten uh, in her uh, feet and she, it has caused severe envenoming. And uh, I don't know whether you could see severe envenoming. There is bleeding, discoloration, blister formation, and she's in the ICU passing hematuria and she was unconscious. There's another patient who was bitten while, uh, while uh, cleaning up her garden on her uh, little finger and this digit is gangrene, gangrene and this particular lady had a severe in my local envenoming and finally she ended up in a huge massive skin graft so when a patient comes with a snake bite most of the time, they bring, they in Sri Lanka nowadays, they come very quickly uh, because of the education we have given, you know, and even in the middle of the night, they will be admitting uh, admitted to the emergency department. And when they come, you need to ask the preliminary questions like, where were you beaten? Which part of your body? How long ago? Where? And most of the time, they either bring a dead snake or a live snake. And uh, you need to also ask if they don't bring and you need to ask the circumstantial evidence. And in Sri Lanka, the crate bite occurs not as an outdoor bite, it's mostly indoor bite while they are sleeping on the ground. So these patients are admitted in the middle of the night to the ED, the emergency department. So while they are sleeping in a rural house, in a hut or something, they are, uh, they are bitten and they don't know uh, because it does not cause envenoming even pain is very much less so not at all they don't feel the bite and they get up with difficulty in breathing unable to open their eyes and they see everything double vision muscle paralysis and by the time they rush to the hospital if they are far away from the nearest hospital then they are we see them they don't admission as well so what i wanted to say is in the management of uh, clinical uh, snake bite envenoming it is important to identify the snake if the, if you are lucky uh, the doctor is very lucky if you if your patient has brought a dead snake or live snake then you can identify if you have the knowledge uh, otherwise of course why in sri lanka we mainly go by the clinical features and uh, features and uh, it also helps if you know what is the snake which uh, then you can anticipate later complication what treatment to give an outcome and prevention so uh, uh, so clinical features because in Sri Lanka the important medical snake the snare, medically important snakes can cause different different pictures so it varies from species to species and the complications will be different and the treatment also because uh, I will be talking about antivenom is the treatment of uh, treatment antidote but uh, antivenom is not manufactured in Sri Lanka for Sri Lankan snake bite and we have to get it from India and since we do not have and uh, we the snakes are different from Indian snake and because of that some snake bite we can't give antivenom even if they have systemic envenoming. So to educate the public also we need to know the uh, well, snake because if it is a great bite you, no point talking about going out going with the torch outside and all because you need to know because it's an indoor bite and how to prevent that by sleep, uh, telling them to sleep on a bed rather than sleeping on a on the mat on the ground
So the species diagnosis, if they bring the dead snake, well and good. Otherwise, of course, we do not have any ELISA or venom detection kit like developed countries. So we mainly use the syndromic approach, syndromic approach by using the clinical syndromes and the circumstantial evidence. So the syndrome one from our study, we have done a national hospital identified snake bite studies passed in, uh, in, uh, in 1920s and we have found Russell's viper bite uh, envenoming uh, causes local envenoming, incoagulable blood, uh, acute kidney injury, and neuromyotoxicity. So if a patient with unidentified snake bite come with these features, then we can guess this is Russell's viper. Then the um, then hump nose viper bite envenoming causes severe local envenoming, and it also causes incoagulable blood and bleeding hematuria, and it causes acute kidney injury. Then uh, saw scale viper bite from the geographical location, you know that that small snake is saw scale viper, that is the circumstantial evidence, as well as it also causes local envenoming and incoagulable blood. And um, a cobra bite causes, like other, uh, 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 as others presented, it causes severe local envenoming, uh, manifested as swelling, severe pain, blistering, necrosis, and neurotoxicity. Then if the crate bite causes neurotoxicity, but no local swelling or minimal, unless you do a major body uh, screening, then you can find the bite maybe behind the, behind the earlobe or groin or somewhere else, anywhere in the body crate can bite because it happens while you are sleeping inside the house. And if a snake, uh, has, snake bite has happened in the sea, of course, then you know, and they, uh, they, uh, they cause neuromyotoxicity, renal failure, uh, and also from that, you know, see snake bite. So based on this clinical syndrome effect, we have made an algorithm to, uh, for our, for our P, uh, clinicians to identify or guess the likely snake. If your patient has been bitten by a snake and no description of snake unidentified, and then see whether there is uh, swelling. Yes, there is marked swelling. Then look for neurotoxicity, yes. But uh, check for the uh, bedside clotting test. And if it is also there, then uh, see whether the patient develops any kidney uh, renal function abnormality or kidney failure, then you know that is Russell's viper. If you have marked swelling, neurotoxicity, but no clotting uh, abnormality, but early blistering and necrosis, and it has happened in the land at the bite, then you know it's a cobra bite. Then if you have uh, marked local swelling, but non-clotting blood also there, and neurotoxicity is not there, but it causes activity acute kidney injury or acute renal failure, then likely snake is hump nose viper. You have swelling, neurotoxicity, there's no neurotoxicity, no acute renal failure, then it's so scale viper bite. You have uh, no local swelling, no neurotoxicity, uh, and it has happened uh, while uh, on land, while sleeping on the house, inside the house, then you know it has to be one of those crates. And if it happens in the sea with uh, no swell, no, not much swelling, but multiple fang marks, neurotoxicity, myotoxicity, then you know that it is a sea snake bite. So we use this algorithm, which is also adapted in the WHO uh, Southeast Asian guidelines also. So we use this to guess the uh, likely snake if the snake was not either dead snake or live snake was not brought, then we use this to guess what is the likely snake uh, and uh, manage these patients. So that is based on this national hospital-based study. We have done a clinical epidemiological study and we found then only when we did the study, we found the hump nose viper envenoming is the leading cause of snake bite in Sri Lanka. But unfortunately, the antivenom that we are using is an Indian antivenom and which is not prepared against the hump nose viper venom so that we can't give antivenom for hump nose viper uh, systemic envenoming. So because of that, we have an urgent need for it. And I will talk about it later. Later, And the syndromic approach was 
develop and algorithm has been uh, developed. So the clinical management of snake bite in when I mean, as you know, you when the patient come, you need to diagnose clinical to say species identification. Then of course you need to do investigations and then the antivenom. There are various types of antivenom now. People are thinking even at the bite site, uh, SMT uh, small molecule therapeutics in addition monoclonal antibodies, the antivenom which causes sometimes people die of antivenom rather than snake bite because of the reaction and uh, you need to do community education and deliver the uh, antivenom carefully and all. So the diagnosis is in Sri Lanka, we go by the syndromic approach and the circumstantial evidence. And we do basic investigation and the bedside clinical examination is called 20 minutes whole blood clotting test. I know everybody knows and the baseline renal function test, uh, full blood count, blood picture uh, is also important blood picture because we have seen in Sri Lanka the vipers and true vipers as well as pit vipers can cause microangiopathic hemolytic anemia which leads to acute kidney injury. So as you know, 20 minutes whole blood clotting test is the test we use uh, because we don't have a readily available rotum or, uh, or PTINR and also because of that, this gives you quickly within 20 minutes whether your patient has clottable blood or coagulable blood or non-coagulable blood. And we also have, in addition to algorithm uh, to identify the snake, we also have a management algorithm by the Sri Lankan Medical uh, Association. The Sri Lanka Medical Association has a hotline service for all the consultants, uh, all the doctors to call us and to find out what is the snake, how to manage. And we have a national guideline when a patient comes with a snake bite or identified or non -ident unidentified or whether there are symptoms, how to manage, when to give antivenom, when not to give, and how to manage. We have this algorithm and the uh, and the guidelines also we also adapted our algorithm the management uh, guideline depending uh, based on the who one or as well as you know antivenom is the only specific antidote as you know all of you all uh, but anyway i need to stress that the most important decision in the management of the snake bite victim is whether or whether to give or not to give because i have seen patients dying of antivenom uh, antivenom rather than uh, by, bitten by a snake. And this is the antivenom we use. This is the Indian antivenom. We get it from different companies from India. And this is a polyspecific antivenom. And it is against four species. One is the Russell Swiper, Dabuya Russelli, Bangarus, Common Crate, and Naja Naja, the Cobra, and the Echis, the Sauce Scale. And it's an equine polyspecific IgG, FAB primed uh, fraction. And so, uh, uh, so it can be only used for all these four species. But as you know, when I showed you the medically important snakes, it's not effective for Sri Lankan crate. You can't use and you you can't use it for hump nose viper bite and all. So still, they 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 claim that para specific activity because of that we can use, but we have seen a lot of reactions and uh, deaths due to that. And uh, Sorry, we also briefly, to... you've reached your twenty minutes. Okay, well, we also um, develop a new antivenom because the antivenom that we are using is not effective. So we manufactured a monospecific antivenom in Sri Lanka against the Russell swiper, and we did the clinical trial, and it was very promising. But unfortunately, it was very, uh, it was uh, not with India, but in developed countries, Australia and UK. Because of that, it was not feasible uh, as far as the price is concerned. Uh, now we are really making an antivenom. Uh, we have already made the antivenom for all those four species in addition hump nose viper also and the clinical trials are done and they are being investigated uh, by clinical trial. So we, as I mentioned, we have noticed the Russell swipe and hump nose wiper bite causes micro and thrombotic microangiopathy TMA and which is the cause for the pathological problem uh, which leads to acute kidney injury. And it also causes uh, uh, most of our patients who develop acute kidney injury 
following Russell swipe and hump nose swiper goes into chronic kidney disease. This is one of our patients who, and it also, as you, as you have seen already in the previous lectures, it causes a lot of chronic disability, non-healing ulcers and all. Thank you very much.